we're going after the colonists. Oh shit, those are not colonists. left. I don't clear to say because there's no real telling. It was just four. So we have twelve left. We have to get at least three with every shot. Look at this. So we can't save until we've get got an involved. Will you get out of my fucking way? We don't have any grenades left, so... So we can get an extra one. It's not gonna work. Five extra. Yeah. That's I will destroy you. They are totally immune to damage at this point. Commander, can you make sense of the controls? 
Any old colonists should still be alive. We have two grenades. Not sure if it's enough or not, but it's still a, a better situation than I thought. So I'm sure we'll make it. I think it's all clear. I tried to fight it, but it gets in your head. You can't imagine the pain. I was supposed to be their leader. These people don't trust me. It wants me to stop you, but I won't. It's I gone. won't. Just shot the gun, dumbass. Obvious, well, obvious what he was gone planning on doing. That's minus one colonist, uh, I think. You can, can renegade points by simply slaughtering the colonists for no particular reason. I can see why it's so hard for me to get the intimidate points. I guess it's sort of your your intimidation attempts are somewhat that, uh, sort of uh, dependent on your reputation. That's the best thing I can think of at least. Switch around our abilities a little bit. What is that? We just need to find this creature and determine what it, what it, keep. What is that? That does not look like any plant I've ever seen. This may be problematic. Invaders, your every step is a transgression. A thousand feelers appraise you as meat, good only to dig or decompose. I speak for the old growth as I did for Saren. You are within and before the Thorian. It commands that you be in awe. 
You gave something to Saren. Something I need. Saren sought knowledge of those who are gone. The old growth listened to flesh for the first time in the long cycle. Trades were made. Then cold ones began killing the flesh that would tend the next cycle. Flesh fairly given. The old growth sees the air you push as lies. It will listen no more. I won't let you keep your thralls. Release them, now! No more will the Thorian listen to those that scurry. Your lives are short, but have gone on too long. Your blood will feed the ground in the new growth! and it's in trouble. Yeah, what is this? Uh, it's probably uh, some kind of toxic effect. I think there was some kind of protection from that. Not quite sure what it was called. Toxic seals. Mm. I think I'll take the regeneration, thanks. Yeah, that's nice. We'll have to move past them. More Asari clips. Great. You should. I might have changed my mind about the toxic damage. Holy crap to the turret. Which reminds me, I don't think we want anti thorian gas anymore. I think we're going for the incendiary. Now it's time for you to burn.
Now, with the shotgun, we can fairly easily manage the situation. Just can't get to us. It's getting upset. Come get me. As long as we can maintain our front against them, we should be fine. I mean, facing constantly where the enemies are coming from. First they drop you to the ground, then one of those comes and vomits on you. Perfect. Light armor quarry and heavy armor union. Don't look good though. I mean the Korean armor. Looks like uh girly armor. And it's not that good. Take biotic protection uh is better, but other than that Well in a different combat situation it would probably be good. Fighting against those biotics is pretty pain. Um, 
are we missing? Level 3. Ah, can progress until we kill that one. Ah, uh, fair enough. I don't want to spend uh, special ability to get rid of them and now um, paint price. Shit. Shit. Everyone seems to be okay. But the Asari clones, it seems, who gets to use his, uh, their abilities first, gets the kills. Yeah, get up. Get up, sleepyhead. There's no point really using the medical abilities of this group at the moment. Oh, it just doesn't... isn't gonna make much of a difference. Well, on the other hand, it's not like we need to save those up either. Anyone's left? Yeah, a couple of guys. What kind of weaponry are you using?
And they should work just fine. Maybe the incendiary rounds aren't really good against these. Well, 30% damage versus organic should be just fine. Thank you for releasing me. How did you end up inside that thing? My name is Shiala. I served... I, I served Matriarch Benezia. When she allied herself with Saren, so did I. Benezia foresaw the influence Saren would have. She joined him to guide him down a gentler path. But Saren is compelling. Benezia lost her way. You chose to side with Saren. So did Matriarch Benezia. Benezia underestimated Saren, as I did. We came to believe in his cause and his goals. The strength of his influence is troubling. She tried to manipulate Saren, but in the end, her plan backfired. The sorry Matriarchs are among the most intelligent and powerful beings in the galaxy. How could one fall under Saren's control? Saren has a vessel, an enormous warship unlike anything I've ever seen. He calls it Sovereign. It can dominate the minds of his followers. They become indoctrinated to Saren's will. The process is subtle. It can take days, weeks, but in the end, it is absolute. I was a willing slave when Saren brought me to this world. He needed my biotics to communicate with the Thorian to learn its secrets. Saren offered me in trade. I was sacrificed to secure an alliance between Saren and the Thorian. Saren's pretty quick to betray his own people. He was quick to betray the Thorian, too. After he had what he wanted, he ordered the Geth to destroy all evidence of his existence. Saren knows you are searching for the Conduit. He knows you are following his steps. He attacked the Thorian so you could not gain the Cypher. What's the Cypher? And why did Saren need it? The beacon on Eden Prime gave you visions. But the visions are unclear, confusing, they were meant for a Prothean mind. To truly comprehend them, you must think like a Prothean. You must understand their culture, their history, their very existence. The Thorian was here long before the Protheans built this city. It watched and studied them. When they died, it consumed them. They became a part of it. So the Thorian taught Saren to think like a Prothean. How? The Cypher is the very essence of being a Prothean. It cannot be described or explained. It would be like describing color to a creature without eyes. To understand, you must have access to endemic ancestral memory. A viewpoint spanning thousands of Prothean generations. I sensed this ancestral memory, the Cypher, when I melded with the Thorian. Our identities merged, our minds intertwined. Such knowledge cannot be taught. It simply exists. Well, we have to have some kind of a way to gain access to that information. You taught Saren, you can teach me. There is a way. I can transfer the knowledge from my mind to yours, as I did with Saren. Try to relax, Commander. Slow, deep breaths. Let go of your physical shell. Reach out to grasp the threads that bind us, one to another. Every action sends ripples across the galaxy. Every idea must touch another mind to live. Each emotion must mark another's spirit. We are all connected. Every living being united in a single glorious existence. Open yourself to the universe, Commander. Embrace eternity.
I have given you the cipher. Just as it was given to Saren. The ancestral memories of the Protheans are part of you now. What was that? Commander Shepard, are you all right? I saw... something. It still didn't make any sense. You have been given a great gift. The experience of an entire people. It will take time for your mind to process this information. You look a little unsteady, Commander. Perhaps you should return to the Normandy. I'm sorry if you have suffered, but there was no other way. You needed the cipher. In time, it will help you understand the vision from the beacon. Is there anything else you can tell me about the Thorian? When the creature enveloped me, I became part of it. But I still don't truly understand it. So alien, so ancient. Its exact age is impossible to know. It measured time differently. Ten thousand years of hibernation broken by a few frantic centuries of activity. Its mind was awesome, magnificent. It transcended all classification. And now it is gone. Mm. Don't tell me you feel sorry for that thing. The Thorin was a unique life form. A sentient being that lived for 50,000 years, maybe more. There is nothing even remotely like it in the known galaxy. I'm grateful you saved me from a life of thraldom. Yet I cannot help but feel some sorrow for the loss of such a rare and remarkable creature. And see if we can pump any actual information out of her. What else can you tell me about Saren? There is little I could tell you that you do not already know. He's powerful, he's charismatic. And he is dangerous. Once I followed him, blind to his true nature. But now I see he's leading the galaxy into an age of darkness and suffering. I want to know more about Benezia. Benezia was greatly respected among our people. A powerful biotic, even for an Asari. She was widely known as a teacher of philosophy and religion. She always sought the paths of peace and harmony. She joined with Saren because she hoped to turn him away from his path of destruction. Instead, she became one of his most powerful allies. As I mentioned before, Matriarch Benezia underestimated Saren. Be sure you do not make the same mistake. Tell me more about this ship Saren has. Sovereign is alien. I do not know how it was built or where it comes from. Its design does not match that of any known spacefaring species. It dwarfs any vessel in the Citadel or Alliance fleets. Its weapons are devastating. Its defenses virtually impenetrable. With it, Saren believes he is unstoppable. You said Saren uses it to manipulate his followers. The indoctrination. There is an energy about Sovereign. You feel drawn to the ship. It makes Saren's arguments more persuasive, more compelling. Spend enough time in Sovereign's presence and you will lose yourself. There is no other way to explain it. Mm. I want to know more about you. There is nothing remarkable about me. I was merely one of Matriarch Benezia's disciples. For nearly two centuries I followed her, learning at her feet. When Benezia revealed her plan to join Saren, she gave her disciples a choice. Only those who were willing had to follow her. Many felt her plan was too dangerous. But I believed in her. I thought she could turn Saren away from his insanity. Instead, we joined him in it. Hmm. What to do with her, though? Now that you're free of the Thorian, what are you planning to do next? If you allow it, I would like to stay here with the colonists. They have suffered greatly, and I played a role in their suffering. I would like to make amends. I don't want to murder her. It wouldn't be out of the question. She, we can't exactly rely on her, but at the same time, we've gotten everything we wanted to gain here already. So, ever. The colonists will need all the help they can get. They'll be happy to have you on their side. 
Thank you, Commander. May fortune smile upon you. You did it. With the Thorian gone, we can start rebuilding for ourselves again. And we're free of Exogeny's threats. We're back to being just a little nowhere colony. Thank you, Commander. I wonder if the Thorium is really gone. You saved most of the infected. It'll take time. It'll be tough going, but we'll make this a home. I hope Ex it's nice. I'd start over. Oh, thanks again. That data will be very valuable once I get out of here. Huh, I hope Exo didn't learn from this. I will do what I can to assist the colony in this difficult time. I am ashamed of the damage done to the lives of these people. Farewell, Shiela. Farewell, Commander. I wish you well in your hunt. I fought so hard, but any thought of my own caused so much pain. Still... There are a few question marks. I never thought I would be so thrilled to see a soldier. Forgive my previous inaction, but under the Thorian's influence, every thought was examined, filtered. What will you do now that the fighting is over? I may stay, try to recover my losses. I can have new supplies delivered within weeks. Perhaps the colony will survive after all. Let me see what you have in stock. Of course. Return in the future, and I may even have more to see. Yeah, that, that'll never happen. Ooh. Good shotgun. Much better than what we have. Much, much better. Mm, still more than I can afford, so it doesn't particularly matter. Let's see if we can sell something. Should we sell to this guy in the first place, though? I'm not sure the price we're gonna get is particularly good. Okay, let's say anti personal round 3 is cost 700. We can compare it to something else. Thank you for everything you did. 700. The only thing I can say for that plant is. Theros will be back in shape in. They tell me you survived the coups. Thanks, Commander. It's great. I have my own thoughts again. Thank you, Commander. Thanks to you. Greta and I can start over. Thank you for it. I'm free. Thank you for giving me free. I what about the crazy me. guy downstairs? Um, I don't think not that much. Might provide something of interest though. We do have a lot of uh, minor quests now, and I'm inclined to go after them. They try to do the Cerberus and research done on the Thorian, so they're an extension of the actual plot. Finally, that damn thing is out of my head. I can think without pain. With the power cells you brought, I can get this place up and running again. Thanks, Commander. It will take time for things to get back to normal around here. Thank you for freeing us. Yeah, we did well. And finally, things are over.
Stand by shore party. Decontamination in progress. Better talk with the crew to we basically move. Commander, you look pale. Are you suffering any ill effects from the cipher? Yeah, talk to the crew because we we'll move forward one step in the lot progression, so maybe they have new things to say. The cipher shook me up a bit. I might be able to help you. I am an expert on the Protheans. If I join my consciousness to yours, maybe we can make some sense of it. Do it. Hurry. We don't have much time. Relax, Commander. Embrace eternity! That was... incredible. All this time, all my research, yet I... I never dreamed. I am sorry. The images were so vivid. I never imagined the experience would be so... intense. You are remarkably strong-willed, Commander. What you have been through, what you have seen, would have destroyed a lesser mind. Come on, get to the point. What did you see? The beacon on Eden Prime must have been badly damaged. Large parts of the vision are... are missing. The data transferred into the Commander's mind is incomplete. You must have seen something. I was able to interpret the data relayed through your vision. What was there, at least. But something was missing. Saren must have the missing information. Maybe he found another beacon. If we can find the missing data from your vision, I can... I can... Oh, I am sorry. The joining is exhausting. I should go to the medical bay and lie down for a moment. Dr. Chakwas should take a look at you. That will not be necessary. I just need some rest. Somewhere quiet. We're done here. Dismissed. I've sent off the Pharos report, Commander. You want me to patch you through to the Council? Patch him through, Joker. Setting up the link now, Commander. Commander, Exogeny should have told us about the Thorian. It would have made your job much easier. You might have been able to capture it for study instead of destroying it. Thorian liked to enslave minds. Anyone who studied it would have ended up as one of its thralls. Perhaps it's for the best, then. At least the colony was saved. Of course it was saved. Shepard would go to any lengths to help a human colony. I never jeopardized the mission. That's good, Commander. Stopping Saren is your primary goal. Everything else is secondary. Goodbye, Commander. We will be waiting for your next report. Okay, let's cruise with the other crew members. Anything new on the non companions? Yes, Commander. Carry on, Presley. Yes, sir. It's the meeting room. Yeah, I'm not... Caden and Liara. New loot. Banshee 6, Raptor 7. Fusion explosive. Sounds good. your opinion on the last mission? I'm glad there aren't many aliens like the Thorian. I don't think my stomach could take it. One of my cousins has an agribusiness. I was thinking of calling him. He 
Maybe you can get some shipments into Furrows. I mean, now that they're cut off from the company. Just trying to get a sense of where the crew's at. Thoughts? Is this an official evaluation, Commander? Or off the record? Elenko, when it's just you and me, you can consider it off the record. That's a generous attitude. Okay. I think there's something wrong with all this. This Saren is trading people to aliens for some kind of lost knowledge. But we can't get backup from the Council? Sorry, Commander. There's writing on the wall here, but someone isn't reading it. The Council doesn't want to believe anything's wrong. I'd call it human nature, but... I hear you. It, it just seems like a group that's been around as long as the Council should see this coming. Sorry if I got too informal. Protocol wasn't a big focus back in Bot. Tell me about it. Biotic acclimation and temperance didn't last past the airlock. To the kids they hauled in, it was brain camp. Sorry, all dead is unkind. We were encouraged to commit to an evaluation of our abilities so an understanding of biotics could be compiled. There are worse results of accidental exposure to element zero on the moon. Beats the brain tumors some kids grew up with. Is there some question about how you were exposed? My mother was downwind of a transport crash. It was before there were human biotics, a little after the discovery of the Martian ruins. It only gets iffy around 63 when Kinetics was running out of first-gen subjects. Until then, they'd relied on accidentals. A bunch of guys in suits show up at your door after school, and next thing you know, you're out on Jump Zero. Jump Zero is Gagarin Station, right? What's it like? Yeah, that's the official name. Biggest and farthest facility we had for decades. Right on the termination shock, the outer edge of the solar system. It's where they did all the goose chase FTL research before we caught on to using mass effect fields. It was a sterile research platform when I was there. There were other kids in the same boat, right? At least you weren't alone out there. That's true. We did have a little circle that'd get together every night before lights out. We didn't have much to do, though. It was a research platform then, and Kinetics kept Jump Zero off the extranet to prevent leaks. Yeah, I'm gonna ignore this possibility. We can uh, sort of uh, take our guesses on what they spend that extra time on, either talking or being physical. Uh, I don't see this particularly irrelevant. Do you know of any intentional exposures for certain? No one knows. Doesn't mean they didn't happen. As big as the exposures were, it was hard to track down accidentals. It was different then. No one knew the potential, so there wasn't a lot of regulation. Anything Kinetics did was gold. I'm not saying they intentionally detonated drives over our outposts, but in retrospect, they were damn quick on the scene. Jump Zero is a long way from home. What was it like? The grand gateway to humanity looks a lot better in the vids. But that's my own baggage, Commander. No bearing on this. No. Alenko, there's no regulation that says you can't be friends with your commander. I appreciate that, Commander. I just don't want you to think that I'm a, a whiner. Besides, I've got my past squared away. Fair enough. Yes, Commander? Is there something you need? How well do you know the Lieutenant? I'd never worked with him before. Tends to keep to himself, though. Maybe because of the headache. I should go. Goodbye, yeah. Commander. Nothing new on that front. Commander, are you coming to check up on me? You look much better. 
How are you feeling? Dr. Chakwas assures me I am going to be fine. I was impressed with her knowledge of Asari physiology. Okay. You're in good hands. Had I get the feeling you want to ask me before. something, Commander. I like talking with you, Liara. No matter what the subject. You have been very understanding with me, Shepard. Very patient. I appreciate that. I know there are some strange beliefs about my people. I am familiar with the legend of Asari promiscuity, but those rumors have little basis in fact. When one of my people joins with an individual from another species, it is a very deep and spiritual exchange. We do not enter lightly into a union. You make it sound almost mystical. A true union goes far beyond an ordinary melding. It is a connection that transcends the physical universe. Two become one. Thoughts and senses merge, identities intertwine. Memories and emotions weave themselves together, becoming entangled in a single, rapturous whole. It is unlike any other experience. In some cases, it can be a truly life-changing event. That sounds weird. Well, it sounds weird. It sounds amazing. Are you saying... No! Oh no! Uh, I am not very good at this, am I? I'm sorry, Shepard. I am trying to explain why I have been so... reserved. The Union is more than just sex. It is the lifeblood of my species, the way we Asari evolve and grow as a society. That is why I have never... Uh, I mean, that is why we must choose our partners with great care. Wait, are you saying this is your first time? I am only 106, barely an adult by Asari standards, and I spend most of my time absorbed in my research. I never really thought about it. Not until I met you. You are very special to me, Shepard. But with all that's happened... Saren, the Geth, the Reapers. I do not know if we are ready for this. Ah, uh, that's uh, that's sort of a... Uh, we're... Things are happening and we're busy in life, so yeah, let's let's just focus on that. I think that's a good way to probably spend most of your life uh, concentration on your career and work and never doing anything else besides that. There's always something going on. Hmm. Well, I, I don't understand, and I don't think you're right, so... I'm ready, if you are. Eager is not the same as ready, Shepard. There is too much at stake. We need to put aside our personal feelings and focus on stopping Saren. I wish it did not have to be that way. But we all have to make sacrifices. Let's... let's talk about something else. Mm, she's full of shit. Uh, I don't believe her argumentation for a second. It, it makes no sense. I should go. Goodbye, Shepard. I don't have any particular interest in trying to uh, consummate any kind of relationship with the current crew we have. But, but with Liara, it's uh, it's sort of at least moving that way without any kind of uh, special effort put on from our part. Probably because of the the link with pro proteins and her, and with the fact that I have had the visions. Sort of a natural reason for us to be uh, constantly chatting together, discussing things with the others. It's uh, it's more business. Else. Oh, hello, Shepard. Are you okay? I don't know. Your ship is amazing, and your crew's been really great to me, especially your chief engineer. But I just sort of feel out of place. The Normandy runs so smooth, it feels like we're not even moving, and the engines are so quiet. How do you sleep at night? 
the silence wakes you up? Back on the flotilla, the last thing you want to hear is silence. It means an engine's died or an air filter shut down. I guess you don't have to worry about that here. But old habits die hard. But it's more than just a silence. This ship feels so empty. It's like half the crew is missing. Back home, I couldn't wait to go on my pilgrimage. I couldn't wait to get away from the crowds. Now that I'm out here, I kind of miss them. Yeah. Maybe that's the point. Sounds like the pilgrimage isn't just about finding resources for the fleet. Maybe it's about teaching you to appreciate your people and culture. You're probably right. We Quarians spend our whole lives traveling. But really, we never leave home. The pilgrimage has given me a whole new perspective on our culture. You know, there's always a few who go on their pilgrimages and never return. I always assumed something bad happened to them. But maybe they just wanted a different life. Hmm. You do plan to return to the migrant fleet, right? I could never abandon my people, Shepard. I will go back eventually. But we have to stop Seren first. Otherwise, I might not have a home to go back to. I should go. <laughs> yeah, the I, I should go is a terrible ending to a lot of this conversation. It, it just... Every time you, you talk, sort of talk about serious subjects, how intimate subjects ended, no, I should go. Commander, good to see you. You've been with CSEC a while. Have you seen much action? Well, not as much as you, but yeah, I've seen some interesting things. I bet you have. Anything in particular that stands out? I remember this Solarian geneticist I was sent to investigate. That case was a bit disturbing. What happened? Why were you investigating them? I was tasked with tracking black market trade on the Citadel. Most of it harmless, nothing I needed to pursue. But during the course of my investigation, I noticed an increase in the trade of body parts. Organs, mostly. We usually get a few of those, but not the numbers I was seeing. We weren't sure if there was a new black market lab, or if some freak was harvesting organs from citizens. So what was it? Both, actually. But it took us a while to figure that out. So how did you figure out what was happening? First, we got a hold of a sample and ran DNA tests. The weird thing was, the match led us to a Turian who was still alive and was very convinced he'd never lost his liver. After a bit of digging, I discovered this Turian worked briefly for Dr. Salion, the geneticist. So I went to his lab hoping to find evidence of cloned organ development. But there was nothing. No Salarian hearts, no Turian livers, not one Krogan testicle. <laughs> You're kidding, right? Why would anyone want Krogan testicles? Some Krogan believe that testicle transplants can increase their virility, counteract the effects of the genophage. It doesn't work, but that doesn't stop them from buying. They'll pay up to 10,000 credits each. That's 40,000 for a full set. Somebody's making a killing out there. What did you do about the geneticist? I brought in some of his employees for interrogation to see if I could get them to talk. While I was interviewing one of them, I came across something suspicious. Good thinking. Blackies are always easier to scare. Exactly. Though in this case it paid off in a different way. One of my detainees started bleeding profusely during the interview. We offered to patch him up and he got frantic, freaked out. I ordered a full exam to find out what was going on. Our medics found incisions all over his body. Some of them fresh. That was our big break. These people weren't just Dr. Salion's employees. They were test tubes. Walking, living test tubes. He was growing parts inside these people? Exactly. He cloned their organs right inside their own bodies. Then he harvested them and sold them off. Most of the victims were poor. He'd pay them each a small percentage of the sales, but only if the organs were good. Sometimes an organ wouldn't grow properly, so he'd just leave it in them. Most of them were a mess, but only on the inside, hidden, so nobody could see it. I hope he got what he deserved. That's the worst part. 
but we never caught him. Why not? What the hell happened? He ran, blew his lab, grabbed some of his employees, and headed for the nearest space dock. By the time I found out, his ship was already leaving. He threatened to kill his hostages if we tried to stop him. But you went after him anyway, right? I ordered Citadel Defense to shoot him down, but CSEC headquarters countermanded my order. They were worried about the hostages, worried about civilian casualties, and the ship was destroyed so close to the Citadel. I told them those hostages were dead anyway. We just used them to make more organs. But they wouldn't listen. Well, you can't get them all. No, but... Letting him get away like that. All they had to do was disable that ship, stop him from running. Maybe the hostages die, maybe they don't, but at least we stopped the bastard responsible for it all. A few casualties is a small price to pay to stop someone like that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, those hostages might be wishing they'd died by now anyway. I just wish I could have stopped him. That's all. Do you have any idea what happened to Dr. Salion? I sent out feelers from time to time, hoping to find something. I thought I'd found him a while back. He changed ships and changed his name to Dr. Hart, his idea of a joke, I guess. I told the military, but they weren't convinced it was him. I got the transponder frequency for his new ship, but I just can't get anyone to check it out. I'll check out the coordinates when I get a chance. I was hoping you'd say that. But Commander, take me with you when you go. If it's Salion, I want to be there when you find him. Hey, another minor request. What do you want, Shepard? Why did you become a mercenary? Lots of reasons. Such as? Such as, I needed to get out of our system. I needed to eat. I needed to survive. Why not stay and help your people? I tried to help. That's why I had to leave. What happened? I was betrayed. I was head of a small tribe. We were trying to restore order after the war, but the other tribes were against us. They followed Jared, one of the few warlords who survived the war with the Turians. But he was old, and so were his ideas. He wanted to continue the war. He wanted us to fight. Turians, Salarians, each other. It didn't matter who, as long as we were fighting. What did you want? I just wanted Jared to shut up. To stop his ranting. I wanted him to stop leading the tribes astray. But he couldn't understand how much things had changed. We didn't have the numbers to go to war. Even if we did, the Genophage made sure we couldn't replenish our numbers fast enough. I told them all to forget about war. We needed to focus on breeding, at least for one generation. And for a while, we were getting through. Some of the tribes started coming around. I take it the Warlord didn't appreciate that. No, he didn't. He arranged a crush with the tribes, a meeting on neutral ground. He wanted to talk. We met at the Hollows, near the graves of our ancestors. The skulls of our dead laid bare to remind us where we come from, and where we all go. It's as sacred as any Krogan place can be. Violence is forbidden. It sounds like a trap to me. You must have suspected as much. I did. But when your father invites you to a crush, well, there are some laws that even we hold sacred. Jared was your father? He was. Until that day, we talked, but we didn't get anywhere. When it was clear that I wouldn't join him, he gave the signal. His men leapt from the graves of our ancestors like Krogan undead. The few that were loyal to me died quickly. I escaped with my life, but not before I sank my dagger deep into my father's chest. That is why I left, and that's why I'll never go back. You 
must have family other than your father. Don't you miss them? You're trying to make me cry, Shepard? I've got some unfinished business with my family, but that's all. What kind of business? <sighs> Before I left, I made an oath to my father's father. I swore to recover my family's battle armor. It was taken from him after the uprising. Who has it? Originally, it was taken by the Turian military. We weren't allowed armor or weapons after the war. Now, it's in the hands of Ton Atus, a Turian scum who collects relics from the war. He's made millions selling Krogan artifacts that were stolen from my people. He's got several bases where he stores his goods, all fortified and guarded. I just don't know which base has my family's armor. Yeah, it seems like we're collecting these minor requests now. Just tell me where to start looking. I'll upload the data to your nav system. But Commander, I want to be there when you find him. So long, Rex. Shepard. Might have to do a little bit of an uh, equipment upgrade again. Not sure if we even have upgraded equipment. We should go through uh, through the options because we do have to sell our crap again. Commander. It seems like every major mission afterwards we do need to do that. If we don't, in the next one we'll hit the I item cap again, and it's it's uh, more trouble that way. What's your opinion on the last mission? Gotta admire those colonials. That's about the worst place for a colony I've ever seen. Given the option, I'd get the hell out of Dodge. Do you have a few minutes to talk one on one? Sure. I was just watching some mail from home. Oh, before I go, we saw Caden in a news vid about the Normandy. He's cute. Later, sis. <laughs> Let's pretend this never happened. Are you interested in the Lieutenant Chief? Of course not, sir. Fraternization is against regulations. What's up? You didn't come by to eavesdrop on family mail. Your family seems to be important to you. Yeah, we've always been close. Me and my sisters especially. With Dad on duty so much, I had to help Mom raise them. After helping raise them, your sisters still talk to you? Amazing. Things were tense between Sarah and me for a while. Then we bonded. Sounds like your father wasn't around much. Wasn't your family stationed near him? Dad always wanted to serve in space, but he wanted us to have real ground under our feet. He'd say, space is beautiful, but you can't raise a family there. I cannot rest from travel. I will drink life to the lees. All times I've enjoyed greatly have suffered greatly, both with those that loved me and alone. For always roaming with a hungry heart, much have I seen and known. Cities of men and manners, climates, councils, governments. What's this crap? Mm. I don't want to shit on her because she likes poetry. Why would I? Uh, still, I'm. I should. I my character would not know this. So. I never thought I'd hear you reciting poetry. Just because I can drill you between the eyes at a hundred meters doesn't mean I can't like sensitive stuff. Just don't spread it around. Ulysses was my dad's favorite poem. Every time he shipped out, he recorded me reading it. He had a dozen versions when he retired. Does he still like it? I sure hope so. I read it to his grave every time I go home. Dad passed on a few years back. He's probably still watching, though. I thought you said he was dead. You know, from heaven. Wherever that is. That's not a problem with you, is it? That I believe in God? Hmm. 
Uh, I don't see what. I do have some problems with pe pe with people believing in God, but it's it's it comes from the nature of faith. It's ne it's not necessarily a problem. My problem with believing in God is that it's sometimes used as a sort of a black hole or wall that prevents all inquiry beyond that. So if a sort of a example would be you have a you want to figure out how things work. You have an option of actually looking at things or and trying to figure it out versus uh, God made it so, and that's your answer. So I, I don't particularly have problem with people believing in God. I, I have a problem with that certain fate sort of uh, in its nature can cultivate the sort of thinking that you, you can't think for yourself. You can't look at things how they are because the faith has to have the answer to everything and it acts as a block or a wall to your own thinking and prevents people from looking at things. It, I would say sort of is evolution the right thing for example that uh, explains how things develop or not. If you have it based on what we currently know it's the most reasonable explanation. The problem version, as far as God would be concerned, would be that the Earth is a few thousand years old and uh, all the species live together, uh, whatever. God landed dinosaur bones into the ground, that sort of line of thinking. I mean, there's believing in God and then there's sort of uh, trying to ignore everything that you realistically have find out or even know because and hiding it behind your faith. You're using your faith as a block to actually thinking and looking and learning about the world around you. So that's my problem I think with God. It's not that you believe. A lot of people believe to some extent and more or less they're probably the, the better people you'll ever meet in your life but there's a I think there's a limit and I sort of have a dislike for it because a certain kind of thinking it, it promotes over just thinking and looking at things as they are instead of trying to inject your faith as, a, as an answer instead of just looking at things now how they are. I suppose it becomes are you trying to make the world fit into your faith or are you just looking at the world as uh, as it is uh, as objectively, objectively as you can possibly look at it and then alter your view based on what you learn at least to some extent. Naturally you can't do it. You have to have so, some sort of solid structures that doesn't always get altered based on facts, but you have to be at least open to the fact that you might not know all, your understanding might be incorrect, and at least be willing to look at things in the hope that maybe something different can come up. But Ashley is it the problem that I believe in God? No, I don't. I don't believe in God. Uh, not in that sense. Uh, I don't. I, I I don't know if God exists or not. Uh, I don't. Uh, I suppose it's a it's a cop out to say that because. Uh, you could say that about a lot of things, uh, Santa Claus, for example. Just because I, I can't say if Santa Claus exists or doesn't exist, because there's no evidence 
uh, you can absolutely prove it one way or another. So I, I can see that being viewed as a cop out, as with God, because there's no real evidence. So you might as well say, if we can't have any tangible evidence of he, of someone's existence like that, why would you even believe it? Why can't you just say, it, you know? But I don't know. My concept of a God, conception of a God, would be so some kind of a creator, creature, awareness, being, whatever. I, I wouldn't know even know how, what kind of a creature that would really be. Uh, uh, but it certainly wouldn't be something that actually takes active interest in what humans do, and or do they eat pork or whatever. Uh, my God would not give a shit about that, not even remotely. I think such rules are people telling people what to do. But I don't know if there is some kind of a creator being or not. I don't know. So... I don't believe in God? Not really. I can't deny that the possibility is there. Keep it to yourself? No. I do too? No. Are you a fanatic? Oh, that seems unreasonable. Not my place to judge. Of course not. Um, I don't like the not my place to judge either because it's like I guess it's more or less the neutral stand here, but I, I don't. It's not. E it to me personally, it wouldn't be even an issue. If you believe in God, you believe in God, and that's something who you are. It's. It's not even worth pointing out or discussing. So I'm having a little bit hard time selecting these options because I I wouldn't really say any of these. I'm I'm more or less. Basing usually decisions that are not really built into my character. I mean, do you believe in God? It's in no way relevant in my opinion here. So, I guess I'm going with what I think more or less. Not my place to judge. It's not about judging. Ah, it's just. It's the police things. are your business. I'm your commanding officer, not your moral compass. Appreciate that, Skipper. I should get back to my duties. Didn't mean to take up so much of your time. Mm -hmm. Dismissed, Chief. Sir. I feel I didn't answer her question. I suppose it's a uh, it's washing your hands from the question instead of actually answering it. Answering the concern, is it really a problem versus do you actually believe you? Okay, and we are not getting an armor upgrade. Ooh, it's not a rifle upgrade though. Ho oh, oh, ho oh, oh, ho ho, that's a good one. Actually, it has an extra. What the hell is that? So, two upgrades. Kinetic stabilizer, maybe. Two kinetic stabilizers. We call damper. Whatever. Next. You, Caden cannot, as long as he has this armor, I, I, I won't take him into our group, I, I just won't, I refuse. Okay, you're a pistol user. Sleto or Raikou? 
I'll take the standard upgrade. What a wonderful armor you have. We have to have an upgrade, yep. Guardian 5. It's only better shield, but take my... I'll take defense's armor. Yeah, Predator 5. A little less damage protection, but everything else is massively improved. And it doesn't look nearly as gay. No, it wouldn't be fine if it looks so festive. But it looks it looks like a child's uh, toy armor, a girl's uh, Halloween costume or something like that. Maybe we should install damage protection on this. doesn't have all that much and he is more or less a sort of a warrior okay pure upgrade there Oops. No, I'm, I'm fine with the machine gun we have. I think Rex should be fine too. With Rex, uh, I'm just interested in basically in the damage. Everything else is secondary. Uh, he has a good armor too. Ooh, yeah, this a uh, massive improvement on you. We're seeing mostly nice upgrades all around. You think? Okay, with shotguns, the heat sinks might be might make a huge difference. I'm not putting any kind of uh, upgrades on these uh, more or less uh, weapons that we don't intend to really use on a regular basis. I think that's it. So now we can at least get rid of the rest. Looking for supplies? Yes. Let's see what you've got. You bet, Commander. We did get an extra permit again. Turian light armor. Yeah. Compare it to human and medium armor. That is that is great comparison. What a what a worthless thing to compare it to. 
I'm uh, not seeing anything particularly interesting here. So, sell. Uh, antipersonal ROMs. Same, uh, same value. But the sell price seems to be the same. Toxic seeds. Okay, weaponry is something we can get heavily rid of at this point. Probably armor too. If we could get rid of all of our extra equipment and buy a single half decent our item, it would be totally worth it. Two hundred thousand. Yeah, this is a mess of an inventory. Gigantic mess. Everything just piled up together there. Exoskeleton 5. And we have exoskeletons. Yeah, 4. So then. Incendiary kinetic. Proton 5 means we don't need any earlier proton rounds really. Okay, we have 333,000. <sighs> so, we're done. Too bad there's nothing really good to buy at this point. By the way, we won't be going to our next uh, another plot mission. Uh, I mean, the main plot. We'll do at least one session where we do the minor little quests and especially given by the other NP, uh, companions. Want to wrap up though? See if something interesting comes up there. It might also make a difference in the end game. I'm not sure what can and can't happen there, but. Usually, if there's kind of a things about loyalty or anything like that, you sort of have to give a damn about your crew, otherwise, there might come serious problems. And we again have six points to spend on something. We could get advanced lift. In combat terms, getting master adrenaline bursts is probably the best idea because research it resets cooldown times and the research re 
charge time for the ability would be 45 seconds compared to the 120 seconds at the start. So it's a drastic, drastic improvement. It costs it to half basically from what it is today. From this one, this one and a half minute. So it's less than a minute. That's a that's the drastic, a very drastic change. With this, you can probably if you're might be able to even use multiple times in a single fight. Differently in every fight you can use it once. So that's a, that's a quite an advantage. Not really liking shield boost. Barrier would be much better. 700 to 1000. Uh, I'm still not paying spending the points. So, uh, naturally, more damage. Pure damage would also be very, very welcome. Special unlocking other special abilities. I think we're gonna go with the shotgun mostly. Rate of fire is drastically increased. It reduces heat by 50% to compensate. Boosts accuracy by 60%. The car shotgun special ability does uh, does an area effect damage plus but plus 150% on the impact point and three meters around it. So that's that's quite a lot. Problem with the shotguns really is that the range is absolutely god awful and to there are creatures that can easily tank them because they have so much shield. Hmm, yeah, we'll leave it that for another time.